Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Trivedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati. And in the course Enzyme Science and Technology, we are going to discuss about the different properties of the enzyme. So, in this context, uh, in today's lecture, we are first going to discuss about the uh, basics of enzymes and then we are also going to discuss about the uh, different properties of the enzymes. So, the question comes, what is enzyme? Okay, right. Enzyme is also known as the biological catalyst, right. So, let us see what are the different properties of the enzyme. So, enzymes are the molecules, okay, which are present in the living cell, right, which are present in the living cell. They are mostly being made up of, of the proteins, although there are exceptions that you are actually also have the ribozymes, right, which is made up of, of the RNA and ribozymes are very specifically not catalyzing all the reactions. They are only doing the uh, catalyzing the splicing uh, reactions. So, uh, if we ignore the ribozymes, it is true that most of the enzymes are made up of, of the proteins. So, if I say it 99 percent enzymes are made up of, of the proteins, only maybe 1 percent or less than 1 percent enzymes are made up of, of the RNA or the ribozymes. And these ribozymes are only doing the one activity that is they are involved in the splicing. Then the enzymes are converting the substrate into the product, right. You know that the enzymes are going to interact with the substrate and that is how they are actually going to form the product and the enzyme is actually going to be released, right. So, enzyme is uh, because it is a biological catalyst, so it is not going to participate into the reaction, it is only going to react chain the reactions. Biological, uh, it is they are biological catalyst, right. So, um, they are the biological catalyst. And what they are doing as a biological catalyst, they are increasing the rate of the chemical reactions, okay. But they are going to be remain unchanged after the chemical reactions, okay. So, that is what the enzyme is interacting with the substrate, but it is actually going to change the uh, uh, and they are changing the substrate into the product, but they are actually going to be remain unchanged. Now, let us see how the enzyme works, okay. So, when we talk about the reactions, for example, you have a uh, substrate like you have two reactants like A and B and when they are getting converted, they are forming the C and D, okay. Now, what is happening? For example, you have the uh, A which is having a group like this, right and the B is having a group like this, okay. So, uh, what will happen is that the A is, if A has to convert it into C, which actually actually having a group like uh, this, okay. So, exactly what is happening is that this A, which is con added to this particular group is taken out, right. So, this group is going to be removed from here and it is actually going to be connected to this, right. And that is how the B is going to be get converted into C and A is actually going to be a D actually because A is no longer having that A group. So, that is how it is actually going to be this. Uh, let me take the real example, right. For example, the glucose plus ATP, right and it is going to form the glucose 6 phosphate right and it is going to form the ADP right. So, now if I say so here the glucose so here if I break this it will say ADP and phosphate. So, this is what is this ok. Now, in this reaction what is happening is that the bond between the ADP and this phosphate is actually going to be broken down and then this molecule is actually going to be transferred onto the glucose, right. 
and that is how you are going to have the synthesis of glucose 6 phosphate and the remaining molecule ATP is get converted into ATP. This means if I have to catalyze a chemical reaction, if I have to catalyze any such reactions, I have to have the breakdown of the bonds, right? That is first thing, right? The, you are actually going to have the breakdown of the bond between ADP and phosphate, right? And then we also should have the uh, formation of bonds, right? Now, this event and this event, both of these events are associated with the high amount of energy, which means they actually require a energy so that the molecules are actually going to have lot of energy and that is how they are actually going to have the ability to break the bond and as well as the ability to form the new bonds, right. So, if you plot the amount of energy what is going to be uh, you know developed, right. So, if the, you see that, right, how much free energy is associated with these molecules. So, you can actually be able to have the two energy, right? You can actually have the A and B when they are and they can be actually present in two different conditions. One is where you have the uh, non-catalyzed reactions. So, if a non-catalyzed reactions, what will happen is that all these has to be done without the help of the enzymes, right? So, it all these require the more in amount of energy, which means the A and B has to, you have to heat them and such a way that they are actually going to cross this energy barrier, right? This, this is the energy barrier what you have, right? So, this is, once you break, once you cross, allow them to cross this energy barrier, the bond between the phosphate and the ADP is going to be broken down and the bond between the glucose and phosphate is actually going to be formed and that is how they are actually going to form the P and Q. This means if I do not add the catalyst, I have to heat these sample to such a high temperature that they will cross this particular barrier, okay. Now, if I add the enzyme, okay, so what will ha what the enzyme is going to do is it is actually going to go and bind the substrate, okay. And then the molecules which are present like for example, the side chains, amino acid side chain and all that, they will actually going to facilitate this process of removal of the band, breaking of the bond and as well as the formation of the new bonds. And because of that, you do not need to heat the sample to such a high temperature. The same reaction can be done even at the lower temperature or even at the uh, normal temperature. So, because of that, you are these substrates were very easily be able to cross this particular in, uh, energy barrier and that is how they will actually going to form the more and more products. This is the event what is actually going to be done by the enzyme. So, what enzymes are doing is they are lowering the activation energy. So, this difference of the energy what you see is actually being called as the activation energy. So, what basically enzymes are doing is they are reducing the activation energy and once they reduce the activation energy, the A and B are it spontaneously be getting converted to P and Q, okay. Because the enzyme itself provide them a suitable environment, enzyme helps the, uh, the substrate to break the bond and as well as to form the bonds. So, the process for which you require the high temperature, you require the more energy that is also going to be taken care. So, this is the way the enzyme actually works. But the question is why we need more uh, enzymes? So, why we need the enzymes? Enzyme is required actually to um, increase the rate of reaction, right? That is the main purpose of the enzyme because the enzyme does not participate into the reactions, they only increase the rate of reactions. So, I have taken few examples. For example, I have taken the example of carbonic anhydrase. So, what you see here is the enzyme reaction rates, right? So, if you have a non-enzymatic reaction rates, the reaction rates are very low, for example, 10 to power minus 1. 
but whereas if you have the enzymes the enzymes are actually going to have a reaction rate which is 10 to power 6 which means there is a rate enhancement of approximately 10 to power 6. So, same is true for even for the other enzymes like corismate mutase, uh, triosphosphate isomerase, carboxypeptidase, AMP nucleosidase and the staphylococcus nucleus. All these what you see here is that in the case in the absence of enzyme or the non enzymatic reactions the reaction rates are very very low which means these enzyme these reactions are very hard to perform which means in 10 to power minus 5 seconds right uh, it will it there, there will be you know uh, reactions right whereas in the case of uh, enzymatic reactions you can have the 50 reactions in per second right these many reactions per second right. So, uh, you will see almost there will be enhancement of 10 to power 6, 10 to power 9, 11, 12 and 14. So, there will be always a very high enhancement of rate of reactions with the help of the enzymes. And why it is important? It is important because of the two reasons. If you want to convert A plus B right, and form the C plus D. For example, I have, we have taken an example of the glucose, right, plus ATP. You know that this is the first enzyme, first reactions of the glycolysis, right, and uh, plus ATP, right. Now, if I have to perform these reactions under the two conditions, for example, under the uh, non-physiological conditions, which means non-enzymatic reactions. Now, if I have to perform this reaction under the non-enzymatic conditions, what will have to do is I have to heat these reactions at 100 degrees Celsius. I have to increase the atmospheric pressure, right? I have to increase the pressure so that the conditions are more and more aggressive, right? Then only the ATP is actually going to give up the phosphate and then only the phosphate is actually going to be transferred onto the glucose. Now, imagine a biological molecule, imagine a biological organism, right? 100 degrees Celsius is a very, very high temperature, right? Whereas, in the biology, you always have a temperature requirement, right? You always have to have the 37 degree Celsius. It cannot go beyond that, right? Because otherwise, it is actually going to affect so many parameters. Like you can actually be able to, uh, you know, change the, uh, you know, you will actually going to have the fever like conditions, right? So, the temperature is fixed. Pressure is also fixed. You cannot work beyond the one atmospheric pressure, right? So, it, 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 it cannot go beyond one atmospheric pressure. This means you cannot change the conditions if when you are talking about the biological system, right? For example, the human beings, they cannot work beyond 37, they cannot work more than one temperature, right? Because otherwise it will, it will cause the damage to the um, blood vessels and all that, right? This means these parameters cannot be harsh but you have to catalyze these reactions. So, what is the purpose? You can actually add the enzyme and what the enzyme is going to do, we have already discussed, right? It is actually going to lower down the activation energy and because of that, you do not have to have the very high temperature. You can actually be able to work with the normal temperature and that is how it is actually going to catalyze these reactions. Now, let us take a very briefly, we will talk about the different properties of the enzymes. So, enzymes are made up of, of the protein except the ribozymes. Uh, they are made up of, of the amino acids and it provides the specific environment for the catalyzing reaction for the different types of substrates. Because you have the different types of enzymes, you can have the polar amino acids, you can have non-polar amino acids, you can have the charged amino acids like the positively charged amino acid, negatively charged amino acid, you can have the hydrophobic amino acid. So, you can actually have the different types of amino acids. You can have the polar, non-polar, you can have the hydrophobic, you can have the charged amino acid. So, because of this, 
you are actually going to provide the very very precise and discrete environment and because of that you are actually going to provide the specificity to a particular substrate so enzymes which are for the glucose will not going to bind the fructose the enzyme which are for the dna will not bind the rna in fact within the dna also there are enzyme which actually going to only recognize a particular dna molecule so they are very specific because a combination of these type of amino acids can provide them the specificity the enzyme with having a small area where it actually binds the substrate and this area is called as the active site so the substrate binds to a small pocket within the enzyme this pocket is known as the active site the molecule produced by the reaction of the enzymatic reaction is called as the product which means the substrate is going to be converted into the product and enzyme this is the enzyme right so enzyme is actually going to interact with the substrate it is going to do rearrangements it's going to break the bonds it's going to form the bonds and that's how it is actually going to produce the products enzyme catalyzed reactions are very rapid than the uncatalyzed reactions right that we have already taken an example we have taken an example of carbonic anhydrase we have taken the corismate mutase and other kinds of enzymes and we have seen that the uh, reactions are you know up, up uh, regulating any anywhere from the 10 to power 6 to 10 to power 14 okay so reactions are when they you don't have the enzyme the enzymes the reactions are very slow when you have the enzyme the reactions are very fast reactions occurs under milder conditions right because the non enzymatic reactions are actually require a very harsh conditions for example 100 degree fahrenheit 100 degree uh, uh, you know uh, and uh, and so on right uh, whereas in the case of uh, uh, enzymatic reactions they are going to be very mild conditions which means 100 degree Fahrenheit which is actually approximately 37 degrees Celsius you require one atmospheric pressure and the physiological pH because many times you might have seen that the, in the chemistry lab people are even do like very uh, you know uh, different types of uh, pH and other kinds of things right so even you cannot work under the those condition as well because the physiology does not allow you to go beyond a certain range of the pH right you can be little bit different from the 7.4 otherwise mostly it is actually going to remain as 7.4 right then they are very specific they are very specific towards the uh, substrate and the products right enzyme activity can be modulated by the non substrate molecules such as the allosteric controls covalent modifications and so on so this is all we are going to discuss in detail where we are going to talk about the allosteric modulations of the enzyme we are going to talk about the covalent modification and so on right uh, so in covalent modification is a very different kinds of enzyme different types of modifications where enzyme is is going to be get converted into uh, enzyme phosphate for example this is one of the covalent modifications and that enzyme is again going to be returned back so you actually going to have one set of kinase you can actually going to have the one set of phosphatase and the phosphatase job is to convert that into this and in some cases the enzyme is actually going to be active when it is non phosphorylated and it is actually going to be less active or inactive when it is phosphorylated but this kind of active or inactive conditions could vary from enzyme to enzyme some enzymes are inactive when they are uh, non phosphorylated they are very active when they are phosphorylated so that depends on the enzyme to enzyme so this is one of the classical uh, example of uh, covalent modification similarly we can have the allosteric modifications and so on uh, in some cases the enzyme amount can be modulated by the synthesis or the degradation so that is also we are actually going to discuss when we are going to talk about the regulation of the enzyme activity so now let's talk about how the enzymes are very specific for the substrate so enzyme specificity is always been controlled by the three processes one is called as the geometric complementarity second is called as the electronic complementarity the third is called as the stereospecificity so geometric complementarity means that enzyme is actually going to 
recognize a particular 3D conformations and uh, they are actually going to active, uh, work on that particular 3D conformation. For example, this is a substrate, right? So it has a 3D conformation like this, right? And that is actually going to be received by the enzyme. If you have another enzyme which is not going to be like this, it is actually going to not going to accept this substrate because then it is actually not going to form a closed complex, right? Because there will be a uh, places where it is not going to be in contact with the enzyme. So, it has to form a closed complex when the substrate is going to interact with the enzyme. So, this is the enzyme, this is the substrate. Then we have the electronic complementity. Electronic complementity means uh, you actually should have the different types of groups what is present onto the substrate and we should have the complementary groups on the enzyme. Okay. So, for example, in this case, you can have the hydrophobic groups, you have the charge group, you have the charge group. So, what you see here is when this substrate will come and bind, what it will find is that there is a hydrophobic groups onto the enzyme. So, it is actually going to form the closed bond, right? It is actually going to be show affinity. Similarly, there is a hydrogen bonding, there will be hydrogen donor, there is a hydrogen acceptors, right? So, that is also present here. Then you have the uh, you know the negative charge here you have the positive charge onto the enzyme so that's how they are actually going to have the salvage interactions and so on so because this is present at a very precise locations you are actually going to recognize only this substrate not the other substrate for example if you have another substrate where this particular sub, uh, you know positive group is missing right in that case you have a negative group here but the positive group is missing so this area it is not going to have a very high affinity compared to this substrate so that's how the enzyme can actually be able to discriminate between the one substrate to another substrate then we have the stereoacidity stereoacidity means the enzyme can also recognize the l type of molecules or the d type of molecule you know that we have the two different types of stereoacidity are l type isomers or the D types of isomers. Mostly the enzymes which are working in the biological system, they are always uh, recognizing the L type of isomers, right? Because the D type of isomers is not very uh, common in the biological system. So, this is the geometrical compatibility. The enzyme's binding site has a structure which is complementary to the substrate, it needs to the bind, okay? Then we have the electronic complementity. So, amino acid that form the enzyme binding sites are arranged so specifically interact and attract the substrate molecules. And then we have the stereoacidity, the binding of the chiral molecule and the catalysis of their reaction is highly specific due to in large part of the inherent chirality of the L amino acid that comprises the enzymes. Then Apart from this, we also require, for example, the enzymes which require the different types of assistance, right? Different types of additional molecules and those additional molecules are called as the cofactor as well as the coenzymes. So, these are the cofactor and as well as the coenzymes. So, cofactors are mostly the uh, metals, right? Or metal-like molecules, whereas the coenzymes are the, uh, the vitamins. So, here this is the table of the different types of cofactor and as well as the coenzymes which are actually been responsible, which are been uh, you know participating into the different types of reactions. Mostly the cofactors and the coenzymes are participating in facilitating the different types of reactions. For example, you have a cofactor which is called as the copper, the copper 2 plus, right? And that is present in the, uh, the uh, cytochrome oxidase. Then we have the iron. So, iron is uh, present in the catalase and as well as the peroxidase. Then we have the potassium which is present in the pyruvate kinase. Then we have a magnesium which is present in the hexokinase and glucose 6-phosphate. We have a manganese, nickel, selenium, zinc. All these are present in the different types of enzymes. Similarly, we have the coenzymes which are also facilitating the different types of chemical reactions. For example, we have the biocytin. The biocytin is uh, working for the decarboxylation reactions. So, it is actually working in terms of transferring the carboxylate groups. Then we have the coenzyme A. Coenzyme A is facilitating the transfer of the acyl group. Then we have a coenzyme B12, 
that is working for the transfer of the hydrogen or the alkyl groups between the different molecules. Then we have the FAD, lipoate, NAD, pyridoxal phosphate, tetrahydrofolate and thiamine pyrophosphates and all these are participating in the one or other reactions. For example, lipoate is participating in the electron and as well as the acyl groups uh, transfers, NAD is working in the hydride ions transfer, pyridoxal phosphate is working in the amino acid group changes for example they are actually changing the uh, transferring the amine groups from the one amino acid to another amino acid then we have a tetrahydrofolate which is participating into the one carbon group so they are actually participating in uh, you know uh, biosynthesis of the nucleic acids and they are working on the salvage pathway then we have the thymine pyrophosphate we are wor working in the transferring of the aldehyde and because the these coenzymes are helping the enzyme right they are helping the enzyme enzyme cannot function the optimally and because of that the deficiency of the coenzymes or the cofactor is leading to the different types of disease for example you can have the phrenesis anemia if there will be a deficiency of the vitamin b12 you can have the pellagra if you have a deficiency of other vitamins then we have the megaplastic anemia and as well as the beriberi. On all these diseases what you see is actually because of the nutritional deficiency. So you cannot have the some of these molecules in your nutrition and that is how you are actually going to develop some of these diseases because these coenzymes are not present and that is how these enzymes will not be able to function and that is how they will not be able to uh, facilitate these uh, chemical reactions. So what we have learned today, we have learned today about that the enzymes are very important for running the metabolic reactions, right. We have discussed about the digestion, we have discussed about the uh, catabolic reactions, we have developed, uh, we discussed about the anabolic reactions. Then we also discussed about how the people have discovered the, uh, the process of catalysis, how the scientists have observed that the uh, addition of acid is sim simply uh, adding the acid into the sucrose uh, into the starch solution is facilitating the breakdown of the starch into the different uh, uh, into the smaller sugars and that is how the Kirchhoff has uh, you know observed that and that is how the other scientist Bergelius has coined the term catalysis the process in which the one, pro one molecule is getting converted into another molecule with the help of the another molecule, but that molecule is not getting consumed or participate into the reactions. And then we also discuss about the role of enzyme in the catalyzing the different types of biological reactions and we at the end we also discuss some of the uh, classical uh, properties of the enzymes. So with this I would like to conclude my lecture here, thank you. Mm -hmm.